When you've trained a learning algorithm, the best way to deploy it is usually not to just turn it on and hope for the best because, well, what if something goes wrong? When deploying systems, there are a number of common use cases or types of use cases, as well as different patterns for how you would deploy depending on your use case. Let's go through that in this video. In the last video, I alluded to some of the differences between a first deployment versus a maintenance or an update deployment. Let's flesh this out into a little bit more detail. One type of deployment is if you are offering a new product or capability that you had not previously offered. For example, if you're offering a speech recognition service that you had not offered before. In this case, a common design pattern is to start with a small amount of traffic and then gradually ramp it up. A second common deployment use case is if there's something that's already being done by a person, but we would now like to use a learning algorithm to either automate or assist with that task. For example, if you had people in a factory inspecting smartphones for scratches, but now you would like to use a learning algorithm to either assist or automate that task. The fact that people were previously doing this gives you a few more options for how you deploy. And you see shadow mode deployment takes advantage of this. And finally, a third common deployment case is if you've already been doing this task with a previous implementation of a machine learning system, but you now want to replace it with hopefully an even better one. In these cases, two recurring themes you see are that you often want a gradual ramp up with monitoring. In other words, rather than sending tons of traffic to a maybe not fully proven learning algorithm, you may send it only a small amount of traffic and monitor it, and then ramp up the percentage or amount of traffic. And the second idea you see a few times is rollback, meaning that if for some reason the algorithm isn't working, it's nice if you can revert back to the previous system, if indeed there was an earlier system. Let's start with an example in visual inspection, where perhaps you've had human inspectors inspect smartphones for defects, for scratches, and you would now like to automate some of this work with a learning algorithm. When you have people initially doing a task, one common deployment pattern is to use shadow mode deployment. And what that means is that you will start by having a machine learning algorithm shadow the human inspector and run in parallel with the human inspector. During this initial phase, the learning algorithm's output is not used for any decision in the factory. So whatever the learning algorithm says, we're going to go with the human judgment for now. So let's say for this smartphone, the human says it's fine, no defect, the learning algorithm says it's fine. Maybe for this example, a big stretch down the middle, person says it's not okay, and the learning algorithm agrees. And maybe for this example, with a smaller stretch, maybe the person says this is not okay, but the learning algorithm makes a mistake and actually thinks this is okay. The purpose of a shadow mode deployment is that it allows you to gather data of how the learning algorithm is performing and how that compares to the human judgments and by sampling the outputs, you can then verify if the learning algorithm's predictions are accurate and therefore use that to decide whether or not to maybe allow the learning algorithms to make some real decisions in the future. So when you already have some system that is making good decisions, and that system can be human inspectors or even an older implementation of a learning algorithm, using a shadow mode deployment can be a very effective way to let you verify the performance of a learning algorithm before letting it make any real decisions. When you are ready to let a learning algorithm start making real decisions, a common deployment pattern is to use a canary deployment. So there's a phone, algorithm says it's okay, rejects that, says it's okay, rejects that, rejects that. And in a canary deployment, you would roll out to a small fraction, maybe 5%, maybe even less, of traffic initially, and start let the algorithm making real decisions. But by running this on only a small percentage of the traffic, hopefully if the algorithm makes any mistakes, it will affect only a small fraction of the traffic. And this gives you more of an opportunity to monitor the system and ramp up the percentage of traffic it gets only gradually and only when you have greater confidence in its performance. 
The phrase cannery deployment is a reference to the English idiom or the English phrase cannery in a coal mine, which refers to how coal miners used to use canneries to spot if there's a gas leak. But with cannery deployment, hopefully this allows you to spot problems early on before there are maybe overly large consequences to your factory or other context in which you're deploying your learning algorithm. Another deployment pattern that is sometimes used is a blue-green deployment. Let me explain with a picture. Say you have a system, a camera, software for collecting phone pictures in your factory. These phone images are sent to a piece of software that takes these images and routes them into some visual inspection system. In the terminology of a blue-green deployment, the old version of your software is called the blue version. And the new version, the learning algorithm you just implemented is called the green version. In a blue-green deployment, what you do is have the router send images to the old or the blue version and have that make decisions. And then when you want to switch over to the new version, what you would do is have the router stop sending images to the old one and suddenly switch over to the new version. So the way a blue-green deployment is implemented is you would have an old prediction service, maybe running on some set of service. You will then spin up a new prediction service, the green version, and you would have the router suddenly switch the traffic over from the old one to the new one. The advantage of a blue-green deployment is that there's an easy way to enable rollback. If something goes wrong, you can just very quickly have the router go back, reconfigure the router to send traffic back to the old or the blue version, assuming that you kept your blue version of the prediction service running. In a typical implementation of a blue-green deployment, people think of switching over the traffic 100% all at the same time. But of course, you can also use a more gradual version where you slowly send traffic over. As you can imagine, whether you use shadow mode, canary mode, blue-green, or some other deployment pattern, quite a lot of software is needed to execute this. MLOps tools can help with implementing these deployment patterns, or you can implement it yourself. One of the most useful frameworks I have found for thinking about how to deploy a system is to think about deployment not as a zero or one, it's either deployed or not deployed, but instead to design a system thinking about what is the appropriate degree of automation. For example, in visual inspection of smartphones, one extreme would be if there's no automation, so it's a human-only system. Slightly more automated would be if your system is running in shadow mode. So your learning algorithms are putting predictions, but it's not actually used in the factory. So that would be shadow mode. A slightly greater degree of automation would be AI assistance, in which given a picture like this of a smartphone, you may have a human inspector make the decision, but maybe an AI system can affect the user interface to highlight the regions where there's a scratch to help draw the person's attention to where it may be most useful for them to look. The user interface or UI design is critical for human assistance, but this could be a way to get a slightly greater degree of automation while still keeping the human in the loop. An even greater degree of automation may be partial automation, where given a smartphone, if the learning algorithm is sure it's fine, then that's its decision. If it's sure it's defective, then we just go with the AI algorithm's decision. But if the learning algorithm is not sure, in other words, if the learning algorithm's prediction is not to confident zero or one, maybe only then do we send this to a human. So this would be partial automation, where if the learning algorithm is confident of its prediction, we go with the learning algorithm. But for the hopefully small subset of images where the algorithm is not sure, we send that to a human to get their judgment. And the human judgment can also be very valuable data to feed back to further train and improve the algorithm. I find that this partial automation is sometimes a very good design point for applications where the learning algorithm's performance isn't good enough for full automation. And then of course, beyond partial automation, there is full automation where we might have the learning algorithm make every single decision. So there is a spectrum of 
using only human decisions on the left, all the way to using only the AI systems decisions on the right. And many deployment applications will start from the left and gradually move to the right. And you do not have to get all the way to full automation. You could choose to stop using AI assistance or partial automation, or you could choose to go to full automation, depending on the performance of your system and the needs of the application. On this spectrum, both AI assistance and partial automation are examples of human in the loop deployments. I find that for consumer internet applications, such as if you run a web search engine or an online speech recognition system, a lot of consumer software internet businesses have to use full automation because it's just not feasible to have someone on the back end doing some work every time someone does a web search or does a product search. But outside consumer software internet, for example, inspecting things in factories, there are actually many applications where the best design point may be a human-in-the-loop deployment rather than a full automation deployment. In this video, you saw a few patterns of deployment, such as a shadow mode deployment, a canary deployment, a blue-green deployment, and you also saw how you can pick the most appropriate degree of automation depending on your application, which could be a human-in-the-loop deployment or full automation. As we went through these ideas, you heard me mention a few times the importance of monitoring to help you spot problems of any so we can address them. Let's dive into the details of how to monitor a system in the next video.